In Ethics of Our Fathers, Chapter 2, Mishnah number 6 in the Kahas Siddur, and it's Mishnah number 7 in the Archkal Siddur. It says like this, pertaining to a statement of Hillel, the famous author of the Tanoic period. He says that Afhu Ra'a Gulgoyles Achas. Once Hillel saw a skull floating on top of the water, Omarla, he told the skull, because you drowned others, you were drowned. And the end will be that the ones that cause you to be drowned, they will also be drowned. This is a statement of Hillel. This is studied between Passover and Shavuos, and again throughout the summer days. And so the question comes to mind, what is the lesson from this Mishnah? <clears throat> Furthermore, why does it say that he saw Golgoyla's Achas, one skull? He should have simply said he saw a skull. Why does the mission have to put the word in achas, a unique skull? Number two is, why did he speak to the skull? Amala, he speaks to the skull. When was the last time he spoke to a skull? Furthermore, it says that in the end, that those that drowned you will also be drowned. Why is that so important? And finally, we know that the ethics of our fathers is called Milde Chasudusa. It's called concepts of piety. In other words, that one who studies the ethics of our fathers is supposed to go beyond the letter of the law. So how does one derive a message here from this mission of seeing a skull bobbing on the water to go beyond the letter of the law? To understand this on Pshat and Remish, Drush and Soyd and Chassidus, to start with the level of pshat, the simple approach and the simple interpretation of this Mishnah is to teach us midah keneged midah. In other words, God punishes measure for measure. We are taught in Igeres HaKodesh, in the holy letters in the Tanya, known as Igeret HaKodesh, chapter 25, over there, the Alter Rebbe says, Al haniza kvan nigza min that nevertheless, as regards the person harmed, this incident was already decreed in heaven. There, the Alter Rebbe explains that if a person, God forbid, is walking down the street and a car crashes into him, or if another person comes down the street and punches him in the face, and now this individual is harmed and hurt and is in pain. You have to know, says the Alter Rebbe, that this already was decreed in heaven. That you should be punched or you should have a car that hit into you. And that you should receive this pain. On the other hand, says the Alter Rebbe, you have a right to sue this person. You have a right to defend yourself against this person. Why? Because of the fact that who asked this person to be the emissary to bring about the bad news? Who asked this person to be the one to cause you to be hurt? There are many emissaries to God, and there could have been another person. So the reason why you're allowed to sue the person or, or to punish the person for inflicting pain upon you is because of the fact that he chose to choose this work. He chose to be the emissary. But the fact that the individual received the pain and the harm, that already was decreed in heaven. <clears throat> and here we see that the Mishnah says that Hillel tells the skull, because you caused another person to drown, and even though the other person was supposed to drown, this was the decree in heaven, because you were the emissary that carried out this mission, because of that, says Hila, you were drowned. What is the remez? What is the hint? The hint is the safe.
the end will be, as the Mishnah says over here, Mitifayich Yitufu. Those who drown, you will also be drowned. Here Hilla was turning to his disciples. I told his disciples that sometimes it's difficult for a Jew in exile to serve God with joy. When a Jew calculates how many centuries we are suffering in Golos and exile, and we see the oppression of the Jewish people throughout all the lands, and we see the hardships that they went through, a Jew says it's so difficult to serve God with joy. How am I supposed to serve God every day and do Torah and Mitzvahs? And on the top of that, to do this, besimcha, to do this with joy. And the answer is that he has to be reminded. The end will be that those that drowned, you will be drowned. In other words, every single criminal and every single enemy that caused pain to a Jew throughout history, each one will be punished for their actions. And therefore, even though perhaps you haven't seen this in your life, and even though perhaps you haven't seen yet all the enemies of the Jews punished for their terrible actions, says Hillel, you should know the end will be just like this skull. Drowned because it drowned another person, so too all of the enemies of the Jewish people, they too will be punished. What is the drush? What is the homiletics? Hillel is speaking to a skull. Now, the problem is we find in the Gemara and the Talmud in the Tractate of Brachis, page 18, side A, they quote a verse from Mishli, from the book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse number 5. Over there it says that when a person enters into a cemetery, you should not put on tefillin, you should not wear tefillin on your head. And similarly, you should not read from a Torah scroll or talk words of Torah, because by doing so, you are mocking the pauper. And this is called the loyeg l'rash. You are mocking the pauper. Who's the pauper? The pauper is the dead person. A dead person cannot fulfill mitzvahs. He cannot put on tefillin, he cannot study Torah. And yet, you're walking around with tefillin, and you're reading from a Torah scroll. Because of this, you are mocking the poor person. Similarly, the halacha is today, that when you go into a cemetery, you're supposed to take your tzitzis, that are hanging from the side of your pants, and put it into your pockets, or put it into your pants. Why? So too, that the dead people should not see your tzitzis which is a mitzvah from God and also reminds us of all 613 mitzvahs. And so the question comes to mind, how is Hillel able to talk to a dead skull and tell it a halacha, tell it a law? You should know because you drowned others, so too you were drowned. And it's interesting to note that today when a, when a person is buried, even though a, a Jewish man is buried in a talis, he is buried in the garment in which he prayed every day. However, they pull out the fourth set of tzitzis, the fourth set of strings, since a dead person is not obligated to do mitzvahs. He has no responsibility to do mitzvahs. Chodesh mena mitzvahs. And because of that, they pull out the fourth corner of strings that are in the tzitzis. And yet, Hilla comes along and he mocks the pauper by saying to it, you should know because you drowned others, you were drowned. What is the soid? So here we find a very interesting thing that the grandson of the Rambam, Rabdovin Anogid, and also this is brought down in the writings of the Arizal, he says that who was this skull? What was this skull that Hillel was talking to? And why was it Hillel out of all people that was talking to the skull? So that Izal says that this skull was none other than the skull of Pharaoh. Pharaoh the king of Egypt. We know that Pharaoh the king of Egypt decreed that all the male children should be thrown into the Nile and the concern was that perhaps, as his stargazers told him, 
that the savior of Israel is going to be a boy and therefore to make sure that this savior will never come into fruition Pharaoh decreed to throw all the male boys into the Nile and now many years later uh, this, this same skull, Pharaoh, who caused so many Jewish children to be drowned, he now was also drowned. Why was he drowned? So one interpretation is that he was drowned by the splitting of the Red Sea. But there's another interpretation that he was drowned years later because after his entire army was drowned in the Red Sea, Pharaoh ran to Nineveh and he became the king of Nineveh. And later his end was that he too was killed by being drowned in the water. And this was retribution for throwing all the male boys into the Nile. So therefore comes along Hillel and he says you should know that because of the fact that you caused all these children to be drowned, so too you were drowned. Why is Hillel telling this to Pharaoh? So first of all, who was Hillel? According to Kabbalah, Hillel was a reincarnation of Moses. Moses lived 120 years, and so too Hillel lived 120 years. And just like Moshe Rabbeinu was the greatest teacher in his generation that taught Torah to all of Israel, so too Hillel was considered to be one of the greatest teachers of his generation. So Hillel being a reincarnation of Moshe Rabbeinu and Moses himself was decreed to be thrown into the Nile. So Hillel comes now and he sees this same soul. This same soul which is the skull of Pharaoh that caused all of these Jewish children to be thrown into the Nile. All of these years Pharaoh did not find any menucha, he did not find any peace and tranquility. We know that after a person lives 90, 120 years in this world, sometimes the soul temporarily goes into what we call purgatory. It goes into hell. And there the soul gets purified and then eventually it goes to its final resting place in paradise. However, many souls that are very evil, they do not go into hell, into the purgatory, because God does not want to give them peace. He does not want to allow these souls to have their final resting place. And so, Pharaoh's soul for many years, like 1200 years, is bobbing around in the waters. It does not find its menucha, does not find its peace. Now, finally, after all these years, God says, okay, Pharaoh, even you, now it's time for you to finally come to your resting place and find your manucha. So Hillel, who was a lover of people, toiv lebriyos, not only Jews, but for all creatures and all creations of God, wanted to help this soul find its manucha. And so Allah tells the soul, because of you, we are learning a tremendous lesson. We are learning how God truly punishes measure for measure and similarly God will reward measure for measure. And because you served as a catalyst for all of my students who are standing with me together today, Hillel says, that alone is enough of a merit for you to truly find your manucha, for you to find your resting place. And that is why we find that he goes on to say, and the end will be, that those that drowned you will also be drowned. We know that if a soul has complaints or expresses dissatisfaction, it cannot have manucha, it cannot have rest. That's one of the reasons why when a person is put to death through a beth din, through a court, the court makes sure that the individual who is being put to death, forgives the court for what they are about to do. It's not only because he has to forgive the court, but for its own soul, for its own purpose to find its resting place. The soul cannot leave this world with any complaints. So Hillel says to the soul, what's your complaint? 
And the soul tells Hillel, my complaint is, it's true that Pharaoh, I was drowned because I drowned all of these souls, the souls and the skulls of the Jewish children. But what about the people who drowned Pharaoh, who drowned me? They were not yet brought to task. They were not yet punished. And therefore, Pharaoh still had a complaint. So Hillel needed to answer this complaint to say, you should know that even those souls that drowned you and caused you to die, they too will be brought to their resting place. They too will have their day in court. And they too will be punished for what they did. Hearing this and trusting Hillel, being a man of God and being a man of Torah law, he received this promise and this trust that those that drowned him will also be drowned. Now Pharaoh was able to go to his final resting place. What is the Mili Dechasudusa? What is, what is the lesson here from the Mishnah? And we know that the Pirkei Evos, the ethics of our fathers, is not only basic laws, but rather how to go beyond the letter of the law. And here we are taught that to go beyond the letter of the law, we have to follow in the footsteps of Hillel. What does Hillel teach us? That even Pharaoh, who was one of the arch enemies of the Jewish people, who caused hundreds of thousands of children, and perhaps millions of children, to perish, still in all, even this soul needs to find its resting place. And so God charges Hillel with this mission, to meet up with this soul. And Hillel realized that it had to be the soul of Pharaoh. After all of these years, this one soul did not find Menucha, did not find its ultimate resting place, and God does not do a miracle in vain. And therefore Hillel realized that it came to him so that Hillel should help this soul find its ultimate repose. And so therefore Hillel, a lover of people, was able to bring even the soul of Pharaoh to its resting place. And so we too must follow in the footsteps of Hillel. And that is not only to find merit in our fellow brothers and sisters, but to go to the 70 nations of the world and give them merit. How do we give them merit? By teaching them the seven Noahide laws. By teaching the nations of the world the seven Noahide laws, we bring merit to all nations and ultimately peace to the entire world. And therefore when Mashiach will come, not only will the Jewish people have the great distinct pleasure to be able to go and enter into their third holy temple, but actually that all the nations will also flock and also go in this path together with the Jewish people to the third holy temple and they will see the glory of God with the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days.